Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Let's begin our service this morning. What a great day it is to be in the house of the Lord. Let's all just stand and worship together this morning. Let's just usher in the spirit today into this place. So worship with the praise team, if you would. Hallelujah. 
Come on, church. He deserves it. What has he did in your life this week? What has he spoke in your life this week? I know for me, I have to give him everything that I have. Everything. My money, my time, everything that I have, I have to give it to him. Because there was a time in my life that I wasn't like I am today. There was a time in my life that I didn't know the Lord. And I'm so thankful. So thankful that I can look at my wife and my kids living for the Lord. I have a true purpose in my life, and it's living for the Lord. And I love it. I'm so thankful that he had changed me. He put something in me that I can never take out of my life, church. What is he putting in you? What is he putting in you this week? What has he did in your life this week? I'm just so thankful. I love him. I love him. I love everything that he has for me. As we go to giving, if we can get the ways to give on the board. We got GiveLify. I use it a lot. I love it. We got PayPal. We got cash and checks. can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We got text to give, 833-931. A lot of ways to give. The Lord's been, he's blessed us. He's blessed us financially through this pandemic and everything. We've grown. Our church has grown. We've all grown financially, I'm pretty sure. So let's give. Let's give as the Lord has given to us. As we say this prayer, as Sister Heidi gets it on the board, this prayer works. I've seen it work in my life. I've seen it work in many other people's life. There's a whole lot of people in here that can testify about this prayer. So let's say this prayer with faith. With faith today. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live in under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance. Walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give. Thank you.
on, let's try that. Lord, fill me up this morning. Fill me up this morning, Lord. Fill me up to the overflow, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us up, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your spirit sweep over this crowd this morning, God. Fill us up, Lord. Let us overflow. Hallelujah. Brother Blake, what's so amazing that when something overflows, when you pour that Coke in that glass and it just kind of overflows, it gets on something else. It makes a little bit of a mess. So when we pray this morning, Lord, fill me up till I overflow. When you're overflowed, you can reach out and you can touch that neighbor next to you. You can touch that person next to you. When you let that spirit of the Lord begin to overflow in your soul, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up till I overflow, Lord. Not only me, but that person next to me. My friend, my family, Lord, help me overflow, God, to where I'm touching somebody else, Brother Bucky. I'm making a difference in somebody else's life. When this spirit overflows in me, that should be all of our prayer this morning. Let me make a little bit of a mess. Let me help somebody else. Let me touch somebody else through my praise and through my worship. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. If you have a need, make it known by the raising of your hand. We want to remember Brother Gio and Sister Amanda. They are preaching out today. The Lord will bless them. Keep his hand up on them. Let them see a great move of the Holy Ghost and bring them back home safely. Let's take all these needs to the Lord. Lord, we love you this morning, God. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you, God. We ask you, Lord, to reach down, God. Touch those that are sick in body. Lord, you took those stripes for our healing, God. And I claim it this morning, God. I release faith in this place, God. Knowing, God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or thank, God, according to that power that worketh in us, God. Reach down, Lord, and touch the prodigal, Lord. Bring that prodigal back, God. Those, Lord, that don't know you this morning, God, we pray that we see someone filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning, God. Oh, Lord, those unspoken requests, God, you know the end from the beginning, God. Lord, we bring them to you, Lord. We bring them to you, God, and we place them at your feet, God. We trust, Lord, that you're going to have your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Come on, let's everybody just lift up that name of Jesus right now. This is your first time here. I'm here to tell you, you're in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is in this place today, amen. Come on, let's just magnify him for a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, and we magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome moving of the Spirit of the Lord that is in this place right now. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Just raise your hands. Everybody, lift your hands. And let's just magnify Him for a moment. Just praise Him. Thank Him for all that He's done for you. He's in the house this morning for a reason. And I'm going to magnify Him. I'm going to bless Him. And I'm going to praise his name because he is worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. And my soul will make its boast of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I'm thankful. And I miss him this morning. Missed him in our men's ministry breakfast that we have on Sunday mornings. He's a vital part of us. That's my pastor. And I love him. I appreciate the covering that I have from him. I appreciate the confidence that he gives me. And I'm thankful for the life that he speaks into my life. A great man of God. A humble man of God. He don't even realize how good he is. And I'm thankful for that. Because he loves each and every one of us. His burden is this church. And I'm thankful for him this morning. If you have your Bibles. Rather lengthy verse of scripture. James chapter 3 verses 1 through 12. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you can't stand it's okay. You may be seated, but if you can, I ask that you stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongue, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for it itself or it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Father and Lord, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. 
Did the spring of water bubble out of both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. And you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. Brother Richard, would you pray please, sir? Amen. You may be seated. Turn around and give somebody a high five and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. I have a friend of mine that I worked with for many years, Brother Jackie at Miranda. He loved to hunt and fish. One day he told me, he said, I'm going to take my boy, Brother Ronnie, and we're going to go deer hunting. So he took his son, he was real young, and he took him deer hunting. He said he got out there way before daylight and he climbed a tree stand, nervous as he watched his boy go up the ladder and he finally got him to sit down. Now he's heard all the horror stories of how a young boy is antsy sitting in a tree stand, how he won't be still, how he wants to talk. He said, I heard all that. But he said, as the sun began to break, Brother Darrell, through the trees, he said, my boy sat like a stone when he just sat there. And he watched the world wake up around him. He said, every squirrel, he'd nudge me and point at the squirrel every little bird he'd look and he'd be amazed at what he saw it was something new to him something that intrigued him and he sat in awe of the wonder that was around him a little bit later john said he sat there he said he felt a nudge on his leg and his boy had eyes about this big around and he pointed that direction john said i raised up around him and i looked and here come a bunch of deer walking through the woods he said, I hadn't even seen them, but my boy had been looking for them, so he spotted them. He said, Brother Jackie, as he sat there, he said, I kind of scrunched up in my seat a little bit. I got my gun up on the shooting rail, and I turned toward the deer in the direction they were going. He said, my boy sat like a stone watching as the deer got closer and closer. He said, he took the safety off. He began to look through the scope and line up a deer that he thought he'd be able to take. He said, and as he put his finger on the trigger, his boy, Brother Robbie, hollered, Shoot him, Dad! <laughs> he said, the deer done an about face and ran through the woods. He said, I ain't never seen nothing like it. He said, I looked over there and my son was just shaking like a leaf. Adrenaline pumping through his body. We call it buck fever. But he said as long as he could, as still as he could, and he had to say something. Something inside of him made him say what was in his heart john said i about jumped out of my skin he said i didn't know what to do he said i watched in horror as all the deer evaporated right into the woods i couldn't believe what had just happened he said i put my gun on safety i put it back on the shooting rail and i looked at my boy and was like what in the world are you doing he said i don't know dad i don't know and he said these words son you've got to learn to hush your mouth. You've got to learn to hush your mouth. So the title of my message today is, Boy, if you don't hush your mouth. So why did, son, why did John's son have to blurt out, shoot the deer? It was because deep in his heart was a desire for his dad to shoot that deer. In his mind, he already seen him in the back of the truck. Brother Jackie, they was taking pictures already. He just knew Dad had him. He's getting closer, and he's getting closer. And my dad is fixing to get this buck, and I'm going to be a part of it on my very first deer hunt. And something in his body and his mind took over, and he couldn't sit still or be quiet any longer. And something came out of his mouth because of his emotional state. Due to the emotional state he was in, he could no longer contain what was in his heart. We have to be very careful, Brother David, of what we say in our emotional states. The Lord said in Luke 6 and 45 in the New Living Translation, He said, A good person produces good things from the treasury 
of a good heart. Now, how do you get things into a treasury? You store them there. You put them there. Garbage in, garbage out. Good things in, good things out. Well, the Lord said a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. That means somebody was taking the time to put good things in their heart and therefore multiplying those good things and good things were coming out. But then he said and an evil produ person produces evil things from the treasury of of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So we learn in James what I just read a while ago. We are incapable of taming our tongues according to the word of God. So because our tongue is in direct correlation with our heart, when we open our mouth, it's like a portal or a, or a, or a, uh, a vision, a literal window of what is to our soul. Brother Richard, when we open our mouth and begin to spew things and begin to say things, it's really showing what's in our heart. Because the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you open your mouth and you begin to speak things, it's showing what you have on the inside. Our words are a literal window to our soul. That's why it's so important, Brother Tripp, when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we're surrendering to the Lord and for a moment in time sister Maria he takes control of this tongue this most vile this most evil this most poisonous unruly member of my body and he takes control of it and he says for a moment in time I'm going to show you who's the boss for a moment in time everybody around you is going to see and know as you speak with a tongue that don't come from you that I am in control of this situation that's why it's important because now I realize that I have received the promise that I was given from the Lord. Now, after the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the problem. Because now it comes to real life. Now I know, Brother Ronnie, that I've got the Holy Ghost because I heard them speak with tongue just like they did in the Bible. But now comes the everyday living part of it. Now comes me walking every single day, living every single day, keeping my tongue under subjection every single day. Now, y'all might not believe this, but when I was a young boy, younger than my son, used to go to Louisiana all the time. I'd stay there in the summertime, and we'd go out on the Chafalaya Basin down in Raymond, Louisiana, and we'd get out on the water for miles. We'd sail in a boat, and it's just beautiful. Oh, herons flying, alligators on the bank, man. The smell of the swamp waking up in the morning, it was, it's spectacular. It's amazing. And I loved it. And the thrill and the emotions that I had from being down there with my family and just fishing and, and having no worries and cares, guess what I did? I was a talking machine because I was thrilled. I'm still a talking machine. But guess what? They nicknamed me Gabby because I talked so much. So from the time I was this high till right now, every time my Uncle Alvin was to see me or every time Tom Goins was to see me, he'd say, how you doing there, Gabby? I'm all right. I'm doing good. But something in me made me want to talk about what I was seeing and what I was experiencing. It was my emotions that were taking over. Well, years later in school, my emotions took over. Every class. They'd take me out in the hallway, they'd bust my backside, and they'd take me to my mom, say, your son got in trouble. Guess what he was doing again? He was talking in class. I can't get him to hush. He's talking in class. Mama said, boy, if you don't hush your mouth, I'm going to skin your hide. It was a continual process. When I'd get home, I'd sit there, watch my dad come into the door, guess what your boy did today, and I'd watch him deflate as he walked to the bedroom, come on boy, with his belt, because it was time again, I got a whooping in school, I'm going to get a whooping at home. It was just how it worked. But I could not control my mouth. Something in me just kept bubbling up. So as a young adult, when I was confronted with these problems, guess what happened? I was pretty witty, Brother Ronnie. And being witty is not always good. Because I was real witty. If you say something to me, I could come back with it quick, boy. 
And I'd put it on you. And a lot of times the people that I would put it on would stand in amazement like, how did he come back with something so fast? Or they'd get mad. Or they would be embarrassed. And then I'd won. I had it. I was in control of the situation until I began to open up the Word of God. And then I realized in James chapter 1 and verse 26 in the New Living Translation, it says, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Then I turned to Proverbs 18 and 21 in King James Version and said, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Well, I understood that, but I didn't understand it. You know what I mean? So I turned over to the New Living Translation, and it said, The tongue can bring death or life, but those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Wow. Then the light bulb went off, Brother David. I'm like, oh, my Lord. That's me. When you love to talk, let every man be slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to anger, because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I had to realize, Larry, you've got to learn to keep your mouth shut. Larry, you've got to learn to be quiet. It's not always about you. It's not always about your situation. Maybe you're brought to these situations so many times because you ain't got it right yet. Then the wheels started turning. And I begin to look into the Word of God a little further. And I come to Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. In Joshua 6. Joshua 6 and 2 it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. I'm giving you the city. I'm giving you the king thereof. And the mighty men of valor. I'm giving them to you. But here's what you got to do. He said, You're going to take all of your soldiers. And you're going to put them in the front. And then you're going to put the priest behind them with the ram's horns. And then behind them is going to be the Ark of the Covenant. And for six days, you're going to walk once a day around this wall. And then on the seventh day, you're going to walk seven times. And at the final time, they're going to blow the trumpets. And you're going to open your mouth and you're going to shout. And I'm going to give you the city. Amazing is what God promised them. So here goes Joshua. Hey, fellas, here's what we're going to do. you got a bunch of young guys, Brother David, that are fired up, ready to fight. We're finally coming over to the promised land. We're about to win this situation, and we're ready to go. And he says, no, for six days, you're just going to keep your mouth closed. You ain't going to say nothing. Look here at Joshua 10. He said, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, you shall not shout. You shall not make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then you shall shout. The command you shall shout, nor make any noise with your voice, demanded the exercise of the utmost self-control and trust in God. They were literally saying, God, you're going to do this, not us. God, you're going to fight this battle and not us. God, you're going to... Lead us through this situation and not us. They were literally putting their money where their mouth was. Joshua was letting them know that God was fixing to handle this situation. He didn't allow them to speak any doubt or any fear. Because he said, you're going to keep your mouth closed until this situation is over with. You're going to keep your mouth closed. Because guess what? I've stood here before. Forty years ago, I stood right here looking at this same building. And I, and I realized that I can take it with the help of the Lord. Me and Caleb were elbowing each other. Hey, we got this. God already promised this stuff. This stuff. But then they walk back with everybody else, Brother David, and their voices begin to speak doubt into the situation. Their voices begin to speak doubt into the lives of those they were ministering to. Holding the grapes. Holding the blessings and the promises of God, they spoke doubt from their mouths. And Joshua said, this ain't happening again. I'm not going to allow you to do this again. I've come too far to allow somebody to speak death into my life. I've come too far to allow somebody to speak discouragement into my life. I've come too far to allow somebody to speak doubt into my life. I will choose life. 
Brother Bucky, I'm going to speak life into every aspect of my situation. I will allow God to have his way in my life. Can you imagine Joshua standing where he stood before, Brother Robbie? Here we go again. I've been here. I know God's able. Caleb said he's still able. I still want my mountain. I'm still able to take it. I'm just as strong as I was 40 years ago. But there were those that had doubt. And he said, your moms and your dads, they had doubt. They stood here and they said, we'll, we'll never be able to take this. He said, you're a new generation of people. You've seen your parents pass away. You've seen everything else go by the wayside. Now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to claim what God has promised us, but I'm not going to allow you to open your mouth and ruin it again. I'm going to allow you to let you see that God is in control of this situation. Zechariah, a priest of the Lord, was in the temple. He was chosen by Lot. His tribe was chosen by Lot to come up to the temple of the Lord. And he was burning incense before the Lord, worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, Gabriel, the angel, that stands up in the presence of the Lord, is standing on the right side of the altar. And Gabriel begins to speak to him and he says, Hey, let me let you know something, buddy. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a son. And his name shall be John. And the boy will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He will never touch wine or strong drink. And he will be filled with the Spirit even before birth. He will be a man with the Spirit and the power of Elijah. And he will help prepare the way of the Lord. Now, Zechariah was a godly man. He was a church-going man. He was blessed and he was called of God. And he was doing exactly what God had called him to do. So he was coming to church every time he was supposed to. He was living the life he was supposed to do. He was fulfilling the promise that God had given him. He was fulfilling the duties that he was supposed to do. Yet, in a moment of emotion, in a moment of fear, and in a moment of doubt, he spoke doubt into his situation. Luke 1 and 18 in the New Living Translation, Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure that this is going to happen? How, how do I know you're telling me the truth? How do I know this promise ain't for somebody else? Number one, the angel showed up talking to you. Number one, you're looking at it. You're nervous because of the situation. You're upset because of the circumstances. But you're face to face with the angel of the Lord and he's telling you exactly what's fixing to happen and you're speaking doubt and saying, how do I know this is really going to take place? I'm an old man now. My wife is old in years too and we can't do because we're too old to do. We're too old to claim the promises. We're too old to, to be able to do anything. I'm not able to do anything because I've done live past my prime. Uh -uh. Somebody else is going to have to take the reins. But you know our pastor has told us time and time again, you don't ever get too old to do something for the Spirit of the Lord. You don't ever get too old to be obedient to God. You don't ever get too old to allow God to use you. I don't care if you're this high, this high, 8 to 80, it doesn't matter. God can use you if you allow Him to. Luke chapter 1, 19 and 20 said, And the angel answered him and said, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. And I was spent, uh, sent to speak to you this morning and bring you glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words which were fulfilled in their own time or which will be fulfilled in their own time. So what he was saying is because you didn't believe what I'm telling you, I'm going to close your mouth and I'm not going to allow you to speak anything that's going to run what God is fixing to do in this situation. Because you didn't have nothing but doubt when I told you what was going to happen. You didn't have nothing good to say about the situation that God has wanted to do in your life. So you were doing nothing but spewing doubt. And if I allow you to, when you leave this place, you're going to spew doubt everywhere you go. You're going to spew troubles. And you're going to spew, I don't agree with that. And you're going to spew everything that is contrary to what I'm telling you right now. But if you just let me close your mouth for a moment, you're going to see that God is in control of this situation.
you're going to see that God is going to take care of what he said he was going to take care of. There was a song I learned when I was a little bitty bitty boy in Sunday school. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. We learned that when we was this high. We ain't figured it out yet. We learned it when we were little, but we ain't figured it out yet. Forty years of kicking rocks in the desert, they still hadn't figured out. Four hundred years in, in slavery, as God built them up from a small group of people to millions of people, they still didn't have it figured out. And all they did was murmur, complain, and gripe, and fuss. But six months, six months into Elizabeth's pregnancy, Gabriel was sent again. He was sent to a woman in Nazareth named Mary, who was in spouse to Joseph. And she was the cousin of Elizabeth. Gabriel come before her and he let her know all the things that God was fixing to do in her life. He let her know she was blessed and highly favored of God and that she was going to have a son and his name was going to be Jesus and he was going to save the whole world from their sins. And she said, how, how is this going to happen? Lord, seeing how I've never known a man, how, how is this going to happen? She asked from a heart of faith, not doubt. Zacharias had doubt. But how do I know you're telling me the truth? Mary was pretty much saying, I, I know that, that this is physically impossible. But with God, all things are possible. She said, but check this out in Luke 1 and 38. You'll see the difference and how you're supposed to communicate. And Mary said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. I don't understand how he's going to do it. I don't understand why you're telling me this and why I was chosen. But so be it. Let it happen, God. If it's your will, Lord, let it be. I'm speaking life into my situation. I'm speaking life over my family. I'm speaking life through my trials and tribulations. I can choose to speak death or I can choose to speak life. Mary did not allow her situation to dictate how she answered. But yet she answered with faith. What we say matters. Sister Callie, as you're coming. What we say matters. We were standing in the back today and I was asking the Lord, Lord, number one, this title probably ain't going to be taken good. I'm talking out of, I'm, I'm trying to weasel my way out of this situation. I, I really am. My hands are sweating. I'm nervous. I'm like, God, I, I don't know if I should say this because I, I don't know. Pastor ain't here to say it's okay. And, and I'm kind of feeling like, God, maybe, maybe I missed the mark for a moment. God, maybe, maybe I need to do something different. God, give me something else real fast, Lord. Guess what I was doing? Literally the same thing I'm preaching about. Then I had to stop myself. Whoa. Hang on a minute. Stop. Sister Maria began to talk about things. I'm like, okay, God. Brother Ronnie opens his mouth and bam, there he went. I'm like, okay, God. Kim started talking about love and she said, I got to view it like Kim is the one giving love. And Kim is the one saying this. And she's putting herself, speaking life into her situation. I'm like, okay, God, I got you. Somebody. If it's just me or somebody else needs to realize that you control what happens in your life by what you say out of your mouth. You speak life into your situation. You speak life into your circumstance. Or you can speak damnation and death. But I am going to speak life into my situation. Donovan Hill wrote... In the book, I Am. And I, I read this to the guys last week. We was back there in breakfast. And I'm going to read it to you this morning. Abram had intentionally and inconveniently correct people. I had to 
intentionally and inconveniently correct people. When they called him by his 99-year-old name. Literally, when someone said, hey, Abram, which meant exalted father. Hey, hey, Abram. He had to say, that ain't who I am. That ain't me. Abram, but when you bought this cow off of me, you wrote, Abram, yeah, I need to change that. I got to fix that. Let me get a new bill of sale and put Abraham on there. Well, Abram, when you bought these goats or you bought this tent, you wrote Abram on there. Well, I, I need to fix that because that ain't who I am any longer. That ain't who I am. That ain't what I am. But I'm Abraham, the father of multitudes. Think of the time that seemed wasted as this old man went back and forth and through the, tr the trouble of changing his name. But then consider the results. There was something so powerful in that confession. Power that unlocked the very promises of God. Power that literally changed he and Sarah's physiological makeup. Do you know what the word confession means? It comes from the Greek word homologeo, which means to say the same thing. <sighs> to say the same thing. So hang on a minute. You mean to tell me I'm not Abram anymore, but I'm Abraham. So when I open my mouth and somebody says, hey, Abram, and I say, nope, that ain't me. I'm Abraham. I am literally, literally saying the exact same thing God has been saying about me from the very beginning. I am now calling things into existence which were not into existence. So when the Lord said, let there be light, and there was light, and the Lord said, let the darkness be gone. And let's separate these waters. And let's plant a tree here. And let's plant a tree there. And let's do this and do that. When I speak what he says of me, I'm doing the exact same thing. Oh, that's Larry that failed before. Nope. That ain't me. That's who I used to be. That ain't me no more. Oh, he's an addict. Well, that's who I used to be. That ain't me no more. Oh, he's a drunk. Oh, that ain't, that's who I used to be. That ain't me no more. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's an adulterer. No, that's who I used to be. I ain't that man no more. I'm a new creature in Christ. Behold, all things are passed away and all things become new. I am who he says I am. I am exactly who God tells me I am. Every aspect of my life is now dictated by who he says I am so when I feel down brother Robbie when I feel like I can't make it when I feel like I missed the mark I've got to stop and say whoa stop Larry stop you are born again of Christ you are a new creature you are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You are an anointed man of God. You're walking in your promise. You are exactly who God says you are. Every day when I look in the mirror, I've got to claim the promises that God has stepped before me. And if I can't do it, I've got to shut my mouth. Because when there's times in my life when I don't feel on top of the world, Brother Ronnie. There's times when people and situations and circumstances knock me for a loop. And something inside me wants to get back and get even. Then I got to stop. I got to look in the mirror and say, you know what? If I control this situation, I ain't going to do nothing but make a mess. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to love them. I'm going to care for them. I'm going to speak life into their life. I'm going to show them the love of God because he's shown it to me. I know how he has handled the situation because I read it in his word. And if he can do it, I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. And when we begin to look at each other, not as failures, not as a red apple, but the apple that's red, 
we begin to see what we can't be in Christ, we begin to sharpen iron, and we begin to allow God to have his way. You talking about a church that sees the potential and the power in each other. What an anointing there will be in this place. Everybody that will, I want you to come to the front. We're going to do something a little different this morning. We need to stop viewing ourselves through the filter of our failures. That's what we do. Brother Bucky, that's what we do. We stand in the back when we know we should be up front. We hide out in a closet when we know we should be here with brothers and sisters of like faith. We view life through the filter of our failures instead of viewing ourselves the way God sees us. But when I open the book and I begin to read, I found a man that was from the least tribe. Brother David, he was scared. He didn't realize his potential. And then the angel of the Lord showed up and said, Oh, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And he looking, who, me? Me? You, you mean me? Oh, David, as you sit on the rock and you strum your harp singing to sheep oh you're nothing get out there with them few sheep you ain't got no business here but David began to view himself at the lowest point of his life as who he says I am I'm anointed of God I'm chosen of God I'm not a failure I'm a lion and a bear slayer and if I can slay a lion and a bear, this giant ain't about nothing. You know why? Because it ain't me. It's the Spirit of God in me that makes the difference. So when I stand on my job, or when I stand in the store, or when I'm confronted with somebody that we had beef with years ago, and I'm looking at them face to face, and my spirit begins to well up, then i got to realize, hold on just a minute. I ain't who I used to be. I ain't the person I used to be. That, that person that you know you had beef with, he died a long time ago. Let me show you something. Let me show you compassion. Let me show you mercy. Let me show you grace. Let me show you what I was shown when I found me an altar to kneel before. And the Lord washed all of my sins away. The unforgivable things that I couldn't be forgiven of, he took them and he casted them as far as the east is from the west. Who am I to bring them back up? Who am I, Brother Cody? Nobody. But I will speak light. So today, first thing we're going to do, because I believe what my pastor told me, standing right here. There's going to be a river bend north. There's going to be a river bend south. There's going to be a river bend east. And there's going to be a river bend west. And we're all going to get together once a month right here. And we're going to worship and we're going to praise together because that is a promise that we can stand on, you know. So we're going to start believing that. And we're going to start claiming that. And we're going to start standing on the promises that God is well able. He's well able to do abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. So first of all, we're going to repent. If there's anything in our life, God, get it out and help us from this moment on. Remind us of this day. Bring this day back before us, oh God. Every single time we begin to feel something well up in us, bring this day back. This Sunday morning, open my eyes to realize that I choose my destiny by what I let come out of my mouth. And no longer will I speak death. Because life and death or in the power of the tongue. But by the help of the Lord from this day forward, when I begin to open my mouth, I begin to allow Him to say who I am, whom you say that I am. That's what I'm going to believe. 
So right now we're going to repent before the Lord. And then we're going to start claiming the promises. Because some promises are going to be birthed right now, today. There's going to be some things, if you believe it, take place today that will change your life if you allow it to. I don't care what you failed at in the past. I don't care how many times you messed up. I don't care what mistakes you've made. Today can be the new day. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can get it today. you got to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and it's a promise. Amen. Today can be the first day of the rest of your life if you allow God to do it. So right now, let's repent. Ask God to forgive us. And then I want you to claim every promise. Every promise that is going to be given in this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Upon the authority of your word, Lord. God, I claim it right now. I claim it right now. God, if there's anything in my life, any attitude, any spirit. God, anything that is against you, any word that I've spoken, oh Lord, that is contrary to your word. Any word that I've spoken that is contrary to the promise that you've spoken over my life. God, forgive me for it. God, forgive me for it and help me only to speak life. God, if I can't do it, help me to keep my mouth shut, Lord. Help me to keep my mouth shut, to keep my hand over my mouth, that you may walk and lead me and guide me, that I may be directed and ordered of you, that you will lead me into the place and the purpose that you would have me to go. God, I claim it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I claim it on the authority of your word. God, that your will will be done in this place today. God, and I lose faith in this place to overcome every situation. Faith to overcome every situation, God, every circumstance. And I speak life into this people. God, a chosen people, a blessed people, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now put your hands on somebody beside you and begin to pray for them. That God will use them and God will anoint them as they sing this song right now. Come on, if you believe it, speak it. Hallelujah. It's not your failure, it's what he says you are. It's what he says you are. You are more than a conqueror. You are able to do all things. In the name of Jesus. God, we claim it right now on the authority of your word, God. That your will be done in this place. God bless this people, Lord. Speak lie. Speak lie. Hallelujah.
Brother Blake says what he's got to say. I, I just want to say something real fast. Surround yourself with people that speak life into your situation. Surround yourself with people that encourage you, that tell you, that hold you accountable. Don't allow just anybody to speak into your life. But you make sure that they're in the word of the Lord before they just speak into your life. And whenever you feel this week or weeks to come that you ain't good enough, open the word up and encourage yourself in the Lord and know that you are who he says you are. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and thank him for his goodness and mercy. Come on, come on. You are enough. You are enough. And he loves us. Uh, as Brother Larry began to speak right there, all, all I could think about was when he brought up Joshua and Caleb and the 12 spies. And I think if, it, if we take anything from today, um, the greatest problems come from within. It, it doesn't come from the trial or what's in front of us, Sister Maria. Um, it comes from within because as those spies come to the brook of Eshcol and they cut the cluster of grapes and they're touching their promise and they begin to exaggerate the report with their words and what was a land that flowed with milk and honey became a land that ate up its inhabitants. Um, then their prey, they weren't going to be enough and then something inside Caleb and caused them to, no, no, we are enough, but they took up stones to stone them. And, and the Lord, it goes on to speak about they, the things that they had said would cost them their promise. And they had literally talked themselves out of their promise. And, and that's exactly what Brother Larry preached on today. And um, I think sometimes we're our biggest enemy. But I'm so grateful for what the Lord's done in here today because I believe some, some promises were birthed in this place today. And some people had a promise, and, and now you have the strength to go after it again. But I'm going to read the announcements before we go into birthdays and anniversaries. But this week, we got coming up, we got youth prayer tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Church cleaning this week is team number three, Sister Kim and Sister Sheila. This Saturday and Sunday, May 21st and 22nd, Brother Paul Evans will be with us. Saturday at 6.30 p.m., he will be training us to lead others to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Sunday will be, will be 
a Holy Ghost service. A few weeks ago, I had the, oper- the pleasure to speak to Brother Evans, and he is really looking forward to it. And he, he's coming expecting people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It, it, it's not hype. He's expecting it in faith. And, and fast this week. Go after it. Because it's going to happen. Um, youth camp, May 31st, June 4th, ages 12 through 15. $185 per camper. Uh, please let Brother Richard and Sister Meredith know today if you plan to go. Church yard sale will be June 3rd and 4th. Please be bringing nice ha- household items to donate if possible. And June 24th is the missions rally at Carothersville. Mighty things will happen in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did we have any birthdays or anniversary in the house this week. Anybody? Anybody else? If birthdays would like to stand, and we'll sing happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus fear every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you ever had. Anniversaries. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Amen. Uh, also, one more thing on the um, Holy Ghost Rally service. If you would like to pr- uh, sign up for prayer and fasting, it's still in the back today. If you would sign up, the more the better. You never have enough, no matter how full it gets. We'll get another sheet. Amen. Brother Terrence, you want to come pray us out? Lord, we just thank you for this service today, Lord. We just thank you for the word that you have brought us, Lord. I pray that your hand of protection be upon us all. Lord, as we travel to wherever we have to, Lord, I pray that this word ministers to us. Lord, we can take it home and let it work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.